Hello everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Um, just going to go over a online discussion I'm having via email with somebody regarding this book here, uh, Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom, Van K. Tharp. Now I've no, it's, it's a pretty popular book, uh, well received, uh, I guess a four and a half overall amount of ratings on Amazon. Now, I'm, I've not read this book, I've not looked at it, but I've looked at this article here, which goes on about this, what is our, how is it used, how to measure the stop loss order. I've gone through this link, and personally, I'm doing the similar approach, I'm just doing mine in a much simpler approach. So I'm not sure if this is gonna be helpful for somebody, uh, namely, evaluating a trade on a return along with position sizing. Position sizing is tough for me, but there's another way I use is uh, portfolio optimization, uh, different techniques like using Markowitz, using long or long and short, or sorry, not Markowitz, Markovian. Is it Markowitz or Markovian? But there's different combinations to assess the actual percentage that you'll allocate to each position to get maximum return for uh, an expected rate of return based upon using a sharp ratio, a Sortino ratio, and that seems to be a popular way to do what a lot of the professionals do. So that's the method I use. It's somewhat not, it's complicated, but it's not complicated compared to this. So here, continuing along, do you think this is something you can code in the system for working with Interactive Brokers API. Yeah, I do, but let's talk about what it is. Basically, getting Interactive Brokers to trail an unrealized PL, no matter how many positions I decide to buy, it would mass sell a market. If I lose a negative 150, but also trail the unrealized PL by R increments to help, for example, this may get confusing for some. Positions gain 150 unrealized PL auto stop a dollar, or sorry, zero dollars for break even. All trades close on a market order, then lock in the account for the day. Uh, that is something I can talk about as well locking in the account for the day. Uh, number two, positions gain $300 realized, unrealized PL auto stop plus 150 for all trades closed on a market day, order then lock the account for the day. Again, that's that's important as well. Position gain plus four, uh, 450 unrealized PL auto stop plus 300 all trades closed on a market order, lock in the account for the day. So example two would be one R, example three would be two R. Now if you need to know, I'll put this link in from stocktrader.com to refer to this R, and I'll ex explain my view of it in a minute. So example two would be a one R, and example three would be a two R. The reason for locking the account is to stop over trading and keep tighter restraints on picking the best entry. Correct, that is uh, a positive uh, way to do it, for sure. Here's the complex, is this R factor. Um, I see no difference in looking at R as and percent moves. If you put on a position or if you put on a batch of positions, uh, most professionals will tell you and retail traders will also tell you, I want a upward move of 1% against all the capital that I'm putting at risk, that I'm deploying, putting at risk. So out of that total, I want a 1% return for the day. Okay, so that is how most traders target what they're after. It does not matter if they put on 100 positions or, or, or uh, units for that position for, let's say, 100 shares of Apple. It doesn't matter if it's 100 shares of Apple or it won't matter if it's one share of Apple. Their goal is still going to be 1%. What throws me off is this $150 bit because it overcomplicates from a coding perspective, uh, 
that you now have to do extra calculations to achieve the same goal. So for instance here, we have um, these, these calculations here where, let's say, you put on a trade the, the, the Apple stock is trading at 467.68. You buy 20 shares of $10,000. We want this target. Our stop is at 460 below the 200 day moving average. Our total risk would be 153, 20 shares times 768. So that's our initial 1R because we set our 1R of this hard amount, this hard dollar amount. Now, that, from a programming perspective or a coding perspective, it can be done, but it's a lot more, comple uh, com more complex to do a simple scenario of, let's say you have $1,000 that you've calculated that you can put at risk every day. It doesn't matter what it is, but what you want is a 1% return on that for the day. So... When you do that, it's all you're focusing is on one percent. So when you set your ATR, average true range, you set the one percent as your goal. Now comes back to our uh, quote here: our, our market order. We have our hundred and fifty dollar day per day target for the day, and then close the account. Um, when you've been watching my cryptocurrency stuff, that is the exact same thing as I'm doing here. What I care about, instead of it being $150 or $300 for the day, a hard dollar amount, what I'm doing is I view the same goal, but on percentage. And when I view on percentage, it's a much simpler calculation because I don't have to do extra calculating to achieve the same goal. So if I'm moving on a 1%, I stop once I hit my profit for the day hits 1% and I then I do the same thing here where I lock my account for the day because I met that goal and it prevents me from the exact same thing here, stops the over trading and keeps tighter restraints on picking the best entry, okay? So we're talking the same language but from a coding perspective, we are using different ways to measure the same, in concept, the same trading goal that we're after. I'm just using a much, much simpler way of looking at it, 1%. So that's in the world of stocks that can be a realistic target for the day when it comes to trading. So hopefully that answers that question or series of questions and scenario from an automated trading point of view. If you are working in the world of crypto, uh, in the world of, of, uh, stocks, forex, probably options and futures. But then there's those that may be interested, why am I still using um, crypto? As I've shown in a previous video that I'm about to put up, if I was to show you this chart right here, and these are the more, more recent on what's going on out there in the world of crypto, why would I set my target for 1% when I've clearly got these cryptocurrency pairs moving at these uh, target levels percent wise for the day or even for the hour. You can clearly see, and I've talked about it before, where the market, the asset class of crypto overall is down. It's negative and it's not a lot going on there. But when you factor in these virtually unknown cryptocurrency pairs, we are getting these moves. So theoretically, I can now go from this 1% daily target and maybe bump it up to 2% on a conservative level. And if the market is the asset class of cryptocurrency is moving really positively, like at 5% moves for the big, bigger cryptocurrencies, then I can adjust that daily target of, I wanna go from a 1% move target and then I want to move up to, let's say, 5% or maybe even 10%. And if it's really good, and I know I have a strategy or an algorithm that is going to get real clear performance, I could even set that daily target potentially at over 20% because I've got a bunch of them 
in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs that are moving over 8%, okay? Now I have to do the deeper analysis to see if these are worthy to trade due to volume, are they manipulated? Are they um, consistently getting you these pro pro uh, profit targets consistently without the crazy uh, whipsaws that will work against you? So I still gotta do those analysis, but this is one of the reasons why I like crypto. <clears throat> because now if I keep it simple and my daily target simple, um, I can have that daily target self-adjust based upon the overall classic, what are the big five or the big 10 crypto pairs doing right now? How are they moving? And then self-adjust that daily target. So that's the power of keeping it simple. And that is the power of using something like cryptocurrency. Now, some people may go, well, what is this thing that I mentioned before of different um, uh, different portfolio techniques in portfolio optimization? So if you were to look up uh, po portfolio optimization, um, let's say, let's see what we have here under Wikipedia. We have different... Um, theories on how to do portfolio optimization again we are talking about this but a much more broad view of it and a much more uh professional way to do it in terms of what the big the big guys are using so there's principal component analysis or sorry principal component um copula stochastic if you wanted and all these other different ways to do it for portfolio um, uh, management and that's where more advanced knowledge and machine learning becomes very useful um, but what I'm after from a more simplistic view is let's say if I want long only which I'm doing now because I'm working with Binance because Binance only allows me to do long only so that's one technique there's also uh, a combination of long and short where you can use shorts to hedge against anything that's a high risk where it will bring the overall performance down so again you can do long short the other one is I believe it's is it Mark yeah Markowitz right here is another technique so there's a combination of using long long only sorry long only long short only and then there could be long only with Markovian or short with Markovian. So there's different ways to look at how to do um, uh, portfolio analysis. But as I said earlier, there's many other ways on top of that using what will become machine learning techniques to get these daily targets. So this methodology here using this Van, this Van uh, Rick guy, this book is a simple way to do it, um, but it, maybe it works and a lot of people may stop at that level but for me on an automated coding point of view I like to use as I explain the long the long short only or the long Markovian or long short Markovian or sorry Markowitz techniques because I can go out there analyze the data run the tests of one of those four combinations and for the day which one will get me the highest expected rate of return uh, using, as I said, the sharp ratio or the Sortino only. And you want to use one or the other based upon volatility in that particular asset class. And on top of um, be able to pick from those batches, which one will get you the highest rate of return. Now, uh, I could shut up right now, but while we're on the topic of portfolio optimization, when you look at stocks, usually most of the volume is going to be based out of New York and based out of New York Times. So from a New York, a New York uh, time zone, we had, we're just working between, let's say, nine to five time zone. So that's one trading session that you focus on and your whole strategy is based around that and you set a trading session with this lock account for the day so that day is defined by that trading session on stock for uh, new york city but then of course we have the asian markets which can pick up 
let's say between, um, I'll say, let's say 6 p.m. to 1, 1 a.m., and that would be Asia. That would include China, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, and other major markets, Japan, uh, as a separate trading session, okay? So that can be your second uh, trading session. For, for If you were to go 24 hours approach on three separate trading sessions. And then of course we have the European, uh, which will start up at 1 a.m. local time, New York time to me. And then that can go till let's say 9 a.m. So we have a 24 hour cycle of three separate um, trading sessions. So we can take this approach and multiply it by three times in a 24 hour period um, because each market in each time zone will have its own set of strong trading regions with their own characteristics and volume techniques or whatever else. So you can do this times three if you got a working strategy and multiply it by three to get potentially three times the volume. But that's stock, okay? Then we get into crypto, and that's 20, uh, this is 24 seven. I mean, there's no doubt on it. So then you can also include Saturday and Sunday, which if you have a working strategy that consistently works, such as this, and you are adding now two more days of the week, you are now, could be enhancing your trading opportunity not just five days a week, but you're now adding two more days because the cryptocurrency market is 24 seven. And that's an extra close to 50% return added on, on the multiple number of trading sessions you look at. And then again, over 24 hours, you divide up the crypto market into three separate trading sessions. So basically what I'm saying is you will say, for New York or the East Coast in the US, I only want one trading session uh, and treat it as such in the world of crypto, but I'm gonna set, let's say for the day for that trading session, maybe a 2% target for that trading session. And then as Asia opens up and there's a lot of volume coming out of Asia on the second trading session in these time zones, you can then separate that out as a 2% target move okay and do the same thing with europe i don't think europe it gets as much volume as compared to asia but you can still take advantage of it and then set a new daily target of two percent okay uh over those 24 hours and then you can do the same thing for saturday and sunday as well so <laughs> this is just just exponentially increases the rate potential rate of return as I said, if you have a set of strategies or a strategy that consistently wins um, using something like this to get you the crazy potential returns, no matter what the market is. And I've just put up a video to explain that. So here, that is why I love crypto. Um, no leverage is needed and the um, commission fees are tiny. It's like 0.1% on Binance. And if you get something that works, you can inc it, it, it explode your rate of return, explode your performance with cryptocurrencies um, to your advantage uh, versus just sticking to one trading session for the day times five days, as opposed to seven days uh, for the week with three separate tr trading sessions. So now you're increasing your trading sessions and your opportunity by 21. So that's huge uh, if you get it right on each trading session. Okay, so hopefully I've answered this person's questions um, and further expl explanation on why I like crypto um, and, and even more advantages with crypto just from a portfolio optimization point of view to really, really enhance your opportunity from an automated perspective using crypto as compared to uh, Forex or CFD or any of the others like stock. Hopefully I'll help you and we shall talk to you later.